Let's pray together, shall we? Father God, we just come to you again because you are our God. You are creator of all things, preserver of all things and governor of all things. And we just want to worship you this morning. Our hearts reach out to you, Lord, as you reach into us and you reach out to us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the past days where you've always been. Thank you for the future days where you always are. And thank you for today and for all that today holds. And thank you for being here with us as we worship you this morning. There are many, many people on our minds this morning, Lord, that we would want to bring to you. And I'm loath to, um, to name because I will forget many, but I do want to just pause and pray for Sheena and Howard this morning and ask, Lord, that you would cover them in your love and your grace and your healing power this morning. It's been a difficult ride the last few weeks and we just ask for a special sense of your presence around both of them today. We pray in your name. But thank you, Lord, that all our friends we can do this to. We can bring them all to and people's names will come to us even as we sit in our homes and we think about one another. And so as names come to our mind, those names you place on our heart, we bring them to you, Lord, for that's the blessed place to be in. And we leave our friends in your hands for your comfort and your your guidance and your forgiveness and your healing and your your mercy and your power and your courage. Lord, we hasten the day when perhaps we can uh, join together again in our worship centre. But while we're apart, Lord, keep us sensitive and um, concerned for each other that we might reach out where we need to reach out. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for all that you have given us on a day-to-day -day basis. Help us not to forget that, Lord. Help us to remember all that you have given us. Not the stuff that we haven't got, but the things that we have got. Um, help us to be a grateful, gratitudinal people. Lord, we love you. We want to honour you and worship you in this time this morning. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our spirits. And may we uh, just join closer together and closer to you um, as we do join together. Lord, continue to comfort and strengthen and guide us, I pray in your name of Jesus. Amen. 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 1 through to 15 After a long time in the third year the word of the Lord came to Elijah Go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the land So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab Now the famine was severe in Samaria and Ahab had summoned Obadiah who was in charge of his palace Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord while Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and had supplied them with food and water. Ahab had said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs and the valleys, and maybe we can find some grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so we will not have to kill any of our animals. So they divided the land they were to cover, Ahab going in one direction and Obadiah in another. As Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognised him, bowed down to the ground and said, Is it really you, my lord, Elijah? Yes, he replied. Go and tell your master, Elijah is here. What have I done wrong, asked Obadiah, that you are sending, handing your servant over to Ahab to be put to death? As surely as the Lord your God lives, there is not a nation or a kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. And whenever a nation or kingdom claimed you were not there, he made them swear that they could not find you. But now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here? I don't know where the Spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave. If I go and tell Ahab and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. Yet I, your servant, have worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel was killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets in two caves, fifty in each, and I supplied them with food and water. And now you tell me to go to my master and say Elijah is here? He will kill me. Elijah said, As the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I will surely present myself to Ahab today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? 
I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, What you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered, and they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or travelling. Maybe he is sleeping, and must be awakened. So they shouted louder, and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took twelve stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name will be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it, large enough to hold about eleven kilograms of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. And then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said. And they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered. And they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice the wood, the stones and the soil, and also licked up all the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, 
Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word to us.